Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tim Gaither Podcast, episode 64. My guest today is my buddy Johnny Sanchez. And as always, we got John Sheezer over there. <laughs> I'll clap for myself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's nobody else in here. Yeah. <laughs> You look good, man. You've been working out or something? Uh, not working out. I need to, but I cut out the carbs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like completely? Trying. You don't eat carbs at all? No bread, no rice, no pasta, any of that. It's it just, it's it's the one thing that I know for sure puts weight on me. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. So when I eat car, when I eat any of that stuff, a sandwich, anything... It's just right there, right in the midsection. Yeah, everybody's different too. Like everyone's on this intermittent intermittent fasting thing. Oh, the inter- I've been hearing a lot about this. Yeah, you can't you can't not hear about it. And yeah. uh, but every time I try it, I, I gained like three or four pounds immediately. You know? Is it muscle you're putting on? Maybe because you know what muscle weighs more than I think it's fat. because I've been because you look you look like you've been working out. I have been lifting a little bit, but I I think it's mainly that I just uh, my body I've been eating the way I have been for like since I quit drinking I've been eating fairly healthy and like five or six times a day just small meals and now when mm-hmm. I eat when I try to intermittent fast my body's like we're starving we're gonna hang on to all this shit and now the uh, intermittent is is it I've heard a few different ones so there's the one where you fast on like Monday and then you eat Three days, and then you fast on Friday again, and then you're back on. Is it like three yeah. days of no eating? And then now here's this other one, which is 12 hours. Like, you eat in the morning or something, and then you got to go 12 hours without it? I, I think the most popular thing is to eat, uh, like, eight hours of the day and 16 hours of the day you don't. And uh, for me, okay. it just feels way too much like cutting weight. You know, yeah, well, and I can't like fuck that, man. Well, I, we did we did a lot of that diff, for different. You're wrestling, yeah, growing up, yeah. mine boxing and wrestling. I wait, wait, you boxed. you boxed and wrestled? Yeah. Up? Oh, I didn't know. I didn't realize yeah. you guys had the wrestling. Yeah. Well, uh, he. I wasn't a life. I, I call him a, a lifer. Uh, you're a life. <laughs> you're a state champ, is what you're saying. Well, yeah, geez, <laughs> over here, well. Vision Quest over here. <laughs> Fuck shoot, man. Fuck shoot. Anyway, that's all. Anybody gets that reference? If anybody out there gets that reference, I love you. Um, you know, I'm friends with that guy now on Facebook. And, the dude uh, that played shoot? Yeah, and he told me, shoot, Brian shoot, actually. Oh, it was shoot. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know for years either. I was like, Wait. are they saying shoot or shoot? Oh, I always thought it was. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting? When the coach says, fuck shoot, did he mess up then? Because it sounds like he said shoot. I think he just said it so fast. Like, fuck shoot. Pardon my language. Okay. <laughs> but you got a state, you got a chance to be a so state it's, champion it's, this it's, year at 190, but not at 168. It's not in the cards. I oh my God, this guy knows the whole. <laughs> what is that? I have no idea what that is. You never watched, saw You've the movie Vision, Vision Quest? Quest? No. From not, the 80s? Not that I'm quoting. Not that I'm... It's a, you, know, you know what's interesting is, you know, there were so many silly, goofy 80s movies that, you know, uh, and I remember talking about Vision Quest at the time to my wife about it a lot. And then one time I said, oh, there it is. Let's watch it. And she was pleasantly surprised by that movie. She goes, this is not what I was expecting. I thought this yeah. was going to be a silly, like cheesy cheesy 80s. And she's like, this is a really good movie. Like, it's, it's uh, what's his name? Um, Loud, uh, Matthew Modine. Matthew Modine. He plays Loudon Swain. Loudon Swain. And uh, do you know the booker Dave Stroop? Yes. He named his son Loudon after that movie. Because <laughs> he, okay. he was a big time wrestler and loved, loved wrestling. But... Um, yeah, it's a movie from the 80s about this guy. Uh, his name's Loudon Swain in the movie, and he's a 190-pounder, and he's pretty good, but he wants to cut down to 168 because there's this guy, Brian Shute, who hasn't lost in, in the premise of the movie. He hasn't lost in three years. Yeah. And he's, like, considered untouchable. Mm-hmm. And his whole team's like, what the fuck do you want to cut down to 168 to take on that monster yeah. when you could be a state champion at 190 and yeah. not cut a pound? And he's like, it's not about that. Yeah, so, and, uh, yeah. But it's it's a really great it's, And that, movie. What's her name? Uh what was her name? Linda Fiorentino. Fiorentino. That's yeah. holy. That girl was amazing oh, yeah. in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's if you guys haven't, if you're up late at night and you and you're just in sort of in an '80s kind of movie, um, but it's good. I recommend yeah. Vision Quest, man. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, is it? Is it? Did they spell it S H O O T? S H U T E. Oh shoot! Like that. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so like you you started probably age eight right seven yeah Se- see seven 
So he went all through. I only wrestled in high school, mm -hmm. um, but I started boxing at eight. Okay. So I went eight to 14 boxing, and then in high school, I did wrestling and track. Why did you quit boxing? Um, it was really more my dad's dream kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I was good. It wasn't like I wasn't good, but, man, the punches started getting harder, dude. Yeah. And more, more, um, you know, getting stunned or knocked down and, and, and sparring. You know, when you're younger, you're getting hit. But even when your head's getting popped back and stuff like that, it's not that, it's not as bad. You start getting to that four, 13, 14 year yeah. age and everything starts changing, you man. You got the, the pre-puberty guy that's an adult that's like that's, whooping your ass now. Yeah, you I mean, it's and you're 14. <laughs> yeah. Like, Screw you, dude. I'll catch up. Totally. <laughs> it's totally, it, it start, I could tell the difference. And it really wasn't a sport that my dad, you know what's so funny? He went to sign me up when I was six. Yeah. Right. And then he said, he took me to this gym and I thought it was cool. And then he said afterwards, he's like, well, you want to sign up? And I said, no, not yet. And he goes, well, when? And I said, I, I don't know why I said this. I go, mm, when I'm eight. You know, I'm six. When right. you're six, eight sounds forever. <laughs> decades away. Dude, I had my eighth birthday. Yeah. The next day, my dad came home from work and said, well, you ready to go sign up at the gym, at the boxing gym? I remember thinking, I, I, I had forgotten all about it. Yeah. That's two years. For a six-year-old, two years sure. is like, and dude, he Third took me down life. to the boxing gym the day, it, I believe it was literally the day after my eighth birthday. Yeah. A day or two, and we signed me up for boxing. Wow. It wasn't even like a choice. Huh. So, He's like, you made this commitment when you were six. <laughs> <laughs> you get a man. I'm holding, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you got to, like, uh, real men keep their words. So, you know what's interesting? I was really good. Because, you know, even at five and six, he was already, I was hitting little mitts and stuff like that. He always right. had gloves around the, you know, the house and stuff like that. So it wasn't like, so, I, I mean, I was good, dude. I was, you know, 40 wins, nine losses. I mean, that's not bad. Yeah. You know, I won some state championships here, uh, Junior Olympic champions championships uh while i was boxing so um so we know about i know about that cutting weight man i mean so they made you cut weight for it even back then even well if you if you had to i mean it wasn't big drops like that sure. but if you if you wanted to to go a little lighter of course they yeah, yeah. they to have you you know which is so unhealthy for kids oh man it's probably <laughs> why we're short that, dude. dude i told my dad i go you probably are the reason why you you probably stunted my growth because yeah. he's Five nine and a half. Like at his peak, he was five nine and a half. Okay, yeah. so it wasn't like he's short. You know, now granted, my mom's only five, so I ended up right in the middle there. So I don't know if. But think how much nutrition you guys are, like starving yourselves of when you're 13, 14, 15, dude, 16. Dude, I was seven years old, and my weight class was fifty two. My first year, fifty two pounds, and my dad was like, "You know, you only weigh fifty. You could make forty nine in the morning." And uh, so seven years old, I remember going to the, the wow. district wrestling tournament when I was seven, and I weighed 49 and a quarter, and they made me run that shit off. They're like, they made, oh, go, you got to go run. So I had to go run off literally four ounces. And uh, At seven wow. years old, dude. Yeah, That's and when I was crazy. in high school, I lost, I went from 162 to 135 oh, in five that. weeks. That's so crazy. And man. almost killed myself. The last week that I made that weight, I... Literally, in a week's time, in five days, had four bowls of cereal and five glasses of water. In a week. That's all I had, I swear to God. And what, you were 15? 16? 16. <clears throat> 16. 15. I was 15 then. And, uh, and didn't, you know, that can't be good for <laughs> growing. Yeah, because, you know, all the other guys, you know, that were doing baseball, basketball, and football yeah. were eating whatever they wanted, drinking tons of milk, right. I mean, just pigging out. And, yeah. you know, they got these other guys that are, I, it's just not, it's just can't, couldn't have been good. Yeah, everyone thought I was going to be like the tallest in my family because I've been this height since seventh grade. Like, I was the tallest in my seventh grade, and then I got to eighth grade, and everyone was like, I was like, where the fuck happened? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I wonder what's average. worse, because I was always pretty much the shortest one in the, every, every class my whole life, so... That would be weird to to have been the taller one and then stop. Well, I was always short, and but then I hit like a growth spurt, oh. and then in seventh grade, all of a sudden I was taller than everyone. But then I just never grew past that. I just never. Grew yeah, I got a little bit taller in high school. Yeah, because I think I, when I started my freshman year, I was I think five even. Yeah. So I just got to like you know, yeah. a few more five more inches. But, so know. so who knows? I may have been. Uh, um, 
may have been taller, but but I'll never. Plus my, you know, and then my dad had me like working out in the gym at, at like 11, 12 with weights. Yeah, and now, that's definitely years not later, for, said for you, you, you and, shouldn't. Yeah, your bones yeah. are trying to. Yeah. And I'm over there doing squats and. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think about growing? <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, why was it his dream? Was he, was your dad a boxer? He was a yeah. He was a, he was a, he boxed. You know, they had boxing in high school when he was in high school in the fifties. Oh wow! So he competed in boxing in high school, and he was also a really really great street fighter. Yeah. But he was a big fan of boxing. Has Huge. has it? Has it carried over at all? Like, have you ever gotten into a fight as an adult and been like, oh, wow, I can still kick people's ass? When's the last Wait, fight you got into? Uh, <laughs> no, I've, no, listen, yeah. it's been good. It's I haven't had, I haven't had, um, I haven't been in a fight in 10 years. Yeah? Yeah, but. But that's still fairly recent. I mean, because you're what, hell are you? 50. Are you shitting me? Yeah, I just turned. Dude, you were like, I didn't even know if you were yet. Maybe I should have said it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what? we'll cut that part out. <laughs> yeah. Forty-three. We're gonna we're gonna change. I just turned forty-three. You make me feel like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just turned fifty in March. No, you look great. Who gives a shit? So you got Thanks, to fight man. when you were forty. Yeah. yeah. Right. How'd that go? I mean, what happened? I took the guy out and with one left. Nice. Yeah. Because it never it was really, on New Year's Eve night. Because it never really leaves you. You know, like no. you probably haven't boxed no. in. 20. No, but I've been into, I, I, you know, it's funny you bring this up. I was, I sat back one day and I was like, all right, how many fights have I been in in my life? Yeah. Right? Because I got picked on a lot when I was in grade school. And it was even worse sometimes when they knew I was in boxing. Yeah. Because some guys were like, some kids were like, I got my first actual, like, real fight where I got suspended was fourth grade. Okay. So I got into the fight. At recess, at lunch, with this, because the kid came up to me, he was new at the school, and he was just like, I heard you, you think you're good. And then we, he, like, <laughs> co cocked me, dude, in the mouth. Yeah. And then we started scrapping, and I got the better of him, but it got broken up, and I got suspended. I got suspended um, my freshman year, getting the fight in class for a yeah. guy that kept picking on me. And so I sat back, and I was like, all right, how many fights have I had in my life? Like, the, happened a lot at the bars. I got to somewhere around 30, 35 nice. in my entire life. <laughs> never started one. Yeah. Never went up to anybody, never shoved somebody, never went, hey, man, I don't like the way you're talking. It was always, because even when I got to the bars, for some reason, people would gravitate, guys who just didn't like me. Yeah. I don't know. This is shocking, because, I mean, I've known you over 10 yeah, years. Yeah, you're, you're one this of the, the most op- likable yeah. people I've... Yeah, I, but it's, it's, uh, there's that little thing with me, like... Um, it's just like a disres- the disrespectful people yeah. I have issues with. Yeah. My favorite, my favorite one was this was this was around this was when I was doing the store a lot, um, John, and um, I was I didn't make it home for Christmas. I must have been around thirty, okay, and I went into the uh, there was a In and Out in the Valley on Ventura Boulevard. And it was Christmas Eve. I was really not in a very good mood because I didn't make it up to see my family up north. And I was sitting there, and um, there was some guy. He was probably around 50, okay? And I sat down with my food, and I started eating, and he had just finished. And this man belch, it starts belching super loud. Yeah. And I sort of have kind of like a weak stomach about stuff like that, Yeah. right? So he goes, he starts burping real loud. I'm like, oh my God. I went like that. And then he's like, he takes a drink of his Coke again. He's like, oh, and then does some more. And I go, oh my God, really, dude? <laughs> so then he's like, he's a big, tall white guy. He's about your height. Are you 6'2? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right around there, yeah. Okay, right around his height. So I was like, come on, man, really? And he's like, got a problem with it? And I go, yeah, I do have a problem with it. I'm trying to eat my food, man. I'm like, dude, that's so gross. Are you serious? And then he's like, well, why don't you do something about it? And he gets up and he stands up and goes, come on, let's see, let's do this. <laughs> I was like, what? And he, so I got up. Was he drunk? I don't know. Okay. He must have been. I think, I think those, the people, they knew him and they were like, he comes around every now and then. And so I got up, dude, and I start walking right toward him. But the funny part was, he goes like this. <laughs> so he's way taller than me, right? So you know, the, so now you know where I'm going with this. 
So I, I, as I walk up to him, and he's, he's doing the old pop item. So I, I went like this, and he went like that, and I shot in. Yeah. I did a double leg takedown, got on top of him, ground and pound. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, the employees, one guy's got, he's grabbed me by my throat. He's pulling me off. Anyway. But I got like, I popped him like eight times. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. And when he got it, his eye was already. By the time he stood up, the eye, his eye was already starting to close right here. So it was I right bet here. he can't burp to, to this day without thinking about you. <laughs> Get his ass beat. Or <laughs> no, that, see, that's a bad because it wasn't like he was picking on me, but he called me out. Sure, and and he's been in front an of asshole. everybody. And so then they they were all holding me back because I was on top. The, the employees thought that I started, and then some lady that was there because he gets up and he's like, "Come on." And he goes like this again. And then they're like, so-and-so, Harold, whatever his name. They're like, get out of here. We're calling the cops on you. And some lady's like, uh, she's like, no, that he started it. That man was being gross and disgusting, and he's telling him. The, and then they were like, okay, all right. I go, yeah, man, I'm trying to eat. And dude, here's the crazy part. He goes outside. You know, he's flipping me off from outside of the window. And I was like, hey, man, this guy's still, you know, harassing me. And I was going to go back outside again. They're like, just, we, we call the cops. So just don't worry. We know so-and-so. He comes in here every night. He was probably drunk. Yeah. Um, and then I sat down and finished my hamburger <laughs> and fries. <laughs> Which it in and out. The fries get cold real fast. So, yeah. I mean, they were really Don't bad. ruin my meal, bro. So. Um, I'm with you. Don't yeah. fuck But you, 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 me you didn't, you weren't somebody that got into a lot of scraps? Um. Sure, I got into a fair amount of fights, yeah. but I was always, I, I never liked hitting anyone, like yeah. in the face. I think maybe I've only, I could probably you, count You them. stomach guy? I could, well, ribs? I, yeah, I had no problem hitting someone like in the body or something, mm -hmm. because in which could probably hurt someone even worse. Sure. But, but for some reason, I always uh, shied away from hitting anyone in the face. Yeah, because yeah, you could hurt your hand, by the way. If yeah, you don't I think I've right probably too. hit someone in the face maybe two or three times mm -hmm. in my entire life, but um, I have a really good headlock. And you never get too old to throw one of those. Yeah, you're, you're right. This kid jumped me outside of a college uh, gig I did once, uh, outside of this college bar in this college town, and uh, tackled me. And I was drunk, and I was, like, posting on my head and, like, just full-on wrestling like we were in a match yeah. on the concrete. And uh, oh. then I finally got him oh. in a headlock. I finally got him in a headlock, and I was I was like in his ear, and I was like, "You want to wrestle, motherfucker?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You picked the wrong guy, dude. Totally <laughs> picked the wrong guy." You know that was always my concern too, man. Like, you know, I what if you end up with you know somebody who you know I could have easily ended up in some type of scrap with somebody who was. This was pre, a lot of this was pre MMA, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. you really have to worry, concern yourself with another boxer. Or a mar just a martial arts guy. Just look for their ears. Just look for their well, ears. Th that's, that's the tip. That's yeah. the yeah. 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 They don't have the ears, and they're like, "I do MMA." You're like, eh, "You're probably not very good." And they just kick their right. Yeah, I yeah. Can see your ears. No, but but you're honestly, it's funny because it, let's see, was the, was that fight like around ten years ago? It was at least ten. Okay, but once I had my daughter, I, I was like, "All right, no, I'm not. No matter how provoked, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get into a." I won't fight anybody again. I, I want to ask you about your kids. That's on my list of shit I wanted to ask. Oh, you, cause okay. I don't know if you know that I'm having a boy in November. Yeah, uh, you told me at the Laugh yeah, Factory. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. I was, I was excited about it. I think I was, yeah. But um, I wanted to ask, when you got into fights when you were a kid, was your dad the kind of guy that was like, so what happened? Did he just want to hear like, yeah, um, that you kicked his Well, ass? here's, uh, um, you know, when uh, I've, I've seen this on social media, uh, Name something that advice that your father gave to you, and people would post. And I, I had to ask my dad first if it, if it was okay for me to, to put what he told me. But literally, the first thing that I can remember that my dad ever gave me was advice was always punch first mm -hmm. and don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, I be, before I went into school, and we're talking preschool, kindergarten. Yeah. My dad said, if you think someone's going to beat you up, or you know, punch first and keep going. That's funny. Until somebody pulls you off or whatever. So yeah. that's my dad. So obviously, you know, my dad would just go, what happened? Yeah. And I was like, the kid started. He kept talking. He goes, okay, well, what, did you get him for what, what, you know? And I'd go, yeah, I, I got, I punched him first, and then I kept doing it. All right, good, good, good. He's like, you sure you don't want to start at seven? You, you want to wait till eight to start? <laughs> so, so he was definitely more concerned, though, about 
whether you won the fight than actually getting into a fight. That's exactly how my dad was. Yeah. And I remember being like, I, I was five and I came home from kindergarten and I was like, all oh, the kids are picking on me because I'm short. He goes, well, punch him in the mouth. There you go. <laughs> we had literally the same dads. Yes. Like, what you, what's your problem? Mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overall, but... Uh, yeah, that's funny. But right? also, to the great thing about the good thing about the the boxing part was, I never i i knew how to i i knew how to punch and I knew where to get people so that I never I never damaged my hands. A lot of guys I know that got into some fights ended up breaking their yeah. knuckles. Or, this one right here, yeah, on the, yeah. right? Because but. they they were hitting here or either just swinging wildly. Their their fists weren't. I've you know. seen adults nowadays make a fist with their thumb in Dude, there. And I'm like, you're going to break, break your thumb. Break your thumb. What are you doing? Put your... It, fuck it. Yeah. Who doesn't know that? That I, just doesn't even feel comfortable. Dude, can like, you imagine? Yeah, no. Punching somebody like that? Crazy. done. Crazy. Or they don't close their hand all the way. Yeah. And you'll break your, and you'll break your hand You're going to break too. the hand, some, yeah. a finger, a knuckle. I mean, you know. Yeah. But, um, but I'm not, you know, what I'll do now is totally... I, it's best I could. If I mean, with the exception is somebody putting their hands on me. Yeah. If, if, you know, if, if sure. it's just an argument, I'm not going to get into it anymore. It's not worth it. But, no. but if some dude shoves me, yeah, if some dude swings at me, sure. well, then, of course, I would... That's a know. different story. But yeah. yeah, you'll think more about it now. Totally. Once once I had my daughter, I was like, oh, man, I can't be doing this. I was just like, I don't have kids. Like, Is there like an instant maturity bump? Like, As soon as you're a dad, you're like, okay, all right, this is what I've been trying to achieve my whole yeah. life, and now I'm here. And, it, and everybody, and most, most fathers, you know, whether they were uncles or friends, and people that I would ask before we had our daughter... Um, it was almost universal. The, the answer was always, you know, I was like, any advice? And they'd always go, well, it's not about you no more. Yeah. Ain't about you, man. you got a big responsibility and you've got to, you know, change any negative type of habits and things that you have. And, you know, yeah. but... Um, you have one daughter or two? Just one daughter, just dude. One, okay. I really wish we could have had... For some reason, I thought you had two. No, man. Um, I wish we could have had a boy. Yeah. Uh, not. I, I'm glad we had her. Sure. I just wish we, we could have had a second. A boy, a, a, also. Yeah. I got you. Like her older. I think it's great when the female is the oldest. Yeah. It's just a nurturing thing for the for the other kids. Right. Um, plus, I'm the third, mm -hmm. so I would have had the fourth, but if if I had had a boy. Yeah. But um, which I know, you know, my dad doesn't bring it up, but I know. He 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 doesn't say anything, but I just know he's probably like that fourth's not gonna come. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> Johnny Sanchez is a good boxer name too. Yeah, you know when I was in boxing, was I it went junior? Are you a junior. I'm the third. So Johnny Sanchez the third. Right. Okay, that's, I, it, that's it, more lawyerly. Or, or early on, <laughs> early on, <laughs> or, or early in my the boxing day was it was um, yeah it sounded funny because they'd be like. And the red corner, uh, uh, John Sanchez the third. It was just John okay. when I was a kid, and then, and then gradually we moved it to Johnny and dropped the third. Where did you grow up? The Central Valley. Okay, so between Fresno California. and Bakersfield. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. dude, that, yeah. that that's that's where the best wrestling comes from is that area. Oh, really? Yeah. So you wrestled in a really tough division area. Oh, that's that's the toughest part yeah, of the state. Really? Yeah, California well, State is really tough. There's only one division for this for this huge ass state. There's one state tournament. You know, most states have like four A, five A, six A. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, like I was in six A, which is the biggest division for Kansas, but it's like it's, there's that the most schools, but it, there's you know there can be three state champions technically, um, but in California it's one state champion, and they're mostly from that Central Valley. They're all. And, yeah. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, and parts of the state are kind of weak. Like, we went to the California State Wrestling Tournament a couple years ago, and I was telling my wife, I was like, shit, can't you oh, yeah, have to yeah, beat yeah, that yeah. kid right now? Um, What's the <laughs> I wish that door was Come fucking on. closed. Uh, oh, I can, I'll close it. Can you get to it, John? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Ay, ay, ay! Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but anyway, I was telling my wife, I was like, Jesus Casey, look at this kid. He's a turd. I could beat him right now. So there's definitely parts of California that you're like, you should probably go surf somewhere. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, of course. But, uh, yeah, anyway. That's so. interesting. I didn't know that, man. Well, um, and then that part of California, that's the equivalent of Oklahoma and Iowa yeah. of California. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the Central Valley, that's, 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 the, all mid, farming. that's the Midwest yeah. of it's California. It's the Midwest of yeah. California. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. don't realize that about that area, man. Yeah. It's all that dairy and... 
pretty much where it, you know it's so interesting to to be in South Carolina where um, my wife is and my daughter, and then I'll be getting fruits and ve- or veggies and it all says California on there. I'm like, that's so crazy. They grow yeah. food for the world. I the, mean, that's, that it's yeah. like the third largest in the world or sixth largest in the world with economy like. Um, Dairy and the agriculture. Yeah, and like in my hometown specifically, it's the Hagen Dawes plant, and the um, Land O'Lakes okay. cheese plant. And Which I would have guessed that was in Minnesota, but they're fucking lying to us. No, no, because here's the thing my area is the area that ri- rivals Wisconsin for cheese. No kid. C- comp- competitively, the cheese where, rivalry. Yeah, the cheese rivalry. Wow. Dude. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> pound for pound, who's making? But who's making? Yeah. So, but we, but we also have. Um, then it's all the you know all the produce, and then and then you know the, uh, most of my a lot of my friends, man, that I grew up with are predominantly were are Portuguese. The, the Portuguese people are the ones with the dairies and the farms out there. Okay. So a lot of my friends, man, I go help them feed their, you know, thinking. Ten thousand head of cattle. So for for milk. So you're Which, you're a boxer, but were you also the funny kid? Uh, you know, I guess I, I I was, but I wasn't the class clown. Yeah, that's how I was too. You know, I was the one. I you know what I? Moments. You, I did too. Or I was the one who would have a a remark after the class clown said something yeah. that maybe kind of made fun of the class clown. Right. Okay. That would top the class climb. But I wasn't the I wasn't like the loud but I you know it's weird. You know when you don't even sometimes I would say something to the teachers and the class would laugh. Yeah. And I remember going I was trying to be well, funny. Yeah, I'm actually legitimately trying to make a statement here on something. Yeah. And the I remember the teachers would tell my mom at the parent conferencing, like, Johnny's this and that and uh he and he makes me laugh. He really makes me laugh. He's always saying I was like, I am? Like yeah. when so that's where I kind of fell in. Yeah. I had teachers that appreciated it too. And I was like, not trying to, because they knew I wasn't trying to be a dick or be funny. They just yeah. would just say shit that they thought was funny. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't really a, cl- a clown either, but I definitely picked my moments because I was kind of quiet and everything. But whenever I got the opportunity, I would be funny. And I really liked how it felt. Yeah. But I wasn't always trying to be, and I, and I wasn't a bully either about like, because I was a good wrestler my whole life, but I wasn't a bully, but I would bully the bullies. Like, if, somebody, right, see, if someone was right. picking on someone, yeah. I'd be like, don't fucking pick on you. Yes. And I'd kick their ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. But, you know, I will say there was, in my in fifth grade, I had a uh, Mr. Stafford, and um, he was he was real, uh, cre- he liked uh, creativity, he liked people to, to do, do different things. And and uh, I remember him, he overheard me tell a joke. I, I did have, I was loaded with jokes because... A uh, buddy of mine had the truly tasteless joke books. Yeah. So I, I had memorized a lot of like joke jokes, but he heard me one time telling a joke and he's like, uh, and this is early on. This is like, like the first week or two of class in fifth grade. And he was like, Hey, what's that joke? What's it? What's it? And I was like, Oh, nothing. And he's like, no, no, no. Tell the class, tell the class. So gradually through the year, he would ask me things like, um, Hey, um, uh, could you do that impression of, he must have known that I was had the ability to mimic people. Mm-hmm. Was really good at mimicking, and and I used to be able to do you know some celebrity impressions when I was a kid. And he at, by the end of the year, dude, he would have me get up in front of the class and do an impression to or some an impression of one of the teachers, yeah, or whatever. I feel like he was kind of a catalyst. he gave me that that taste of that. I remember going, damn, this feels great. Yeah, <laughs> getting the attention and like la- la- yeah. And, and I remember even rewriting like. The village people had a song called In the Navy, and I wrote one called In the Army, and there was a couple of other songs that I did. Uh, just not the whole thing, I just a little bit of it. Right. Like the chorus, I would change, and I'd get up and I would do that sometimes, and the class would laugh, and I'd sit back down, and I was just like... And he has to, you can feel it inside still, that rush, like, oh, fucking, I felt great. I felt great. <laughs> That's why that's why I, I wrestled for two years in college at a small school, and then I graduated from K-State. And those two, that was a hard two years for me because it was the first time in my life that I had no way to stand out. I had these huge auditorium classrooms, mm-hmm. so I couldn't, like, be sneakily funny. You know, I, there's no way to be funny in, in those big, huge classes. Right. And I wasn't wrestling for the first time since I was seven years old, so I had no way to stand out. I, had no, I was kind of shy. It was just a very 
difficult couple of years for me because oh. for the first time in my life I didn't yeah. have any way to be like oh that's Tim he's he's funny and he's a good wrestler it, and that was just like it's just some dickhead <laughs> 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 you know so is this like a junior college or a community college is that uh, what, the school I wrestled at was a, a JUCO yeah it yeah. was at Labet in southeast Kansas but um, oh you guys call it the JUCO junior college yeah oh that's funny I don't yeah. know if I've heard that one before yeah yeah, that was that's kind of a standard. I guess we both grew up in and around Kansas City, but it was oh. always JUCO, JUCO, JUCO. Oh, that's funny. Well, because then... Johnson County Community College, where we went, or where we, that was in our area, was like this. It was bigger than most universities. I mean, it was a huge junior college. Oh, so we, okay. we were just like, oh, you're gonna go to JUCO and then KU. Like, yeah. so that's what JUCO, right? Yeah. Not JUCO. Yeah. JUCO. Co, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Just short for junior college. I think if they did that in California, we'd run into some issues with like Latino accents. <laughs> <laughs> Chico? Wait, wait. Are you talking junior college or if I left? <laughs> when did you when did you decide you wanted to try stand up? When I was working at the Lewis Rich Turkey Plant in Tulare. Oh yeah, that'll make it. That's my hometown. Up. And uh, I was working on the assembly line and In Living Color was on at that time. Okay. And I used to go we I used to do impressions of Fire Marshal Bill and all the other characters and and it wasn't until like some people were like you should do comedy there's no you know what's crazy there's all this comedy in the valley now yeah back there there's there's even a comedy club or night a bar that runs comedy weekly in my hometown wow. which was unheard of when I was growing up out there so um, who books that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude uh, I don't think there's any pay on that one. that's hilarious who books that well the name of the um, this guy just hit me up it's so funny he just hit me up on Facebook the other day he's like hey dude you know I run um, he's co-owner of Barmageddon okay that's the name of the bar it used to be the old Johnny's Snooker a little billiards place that we used to go to when we were young um, it's a downstairs place and he contacted me and this guy told me that um, he and some friends got so frustrated trying to driving all the way to either Fresno or Bakersfield which is they're both about an hour outside of Tulare that uh, to do five minutes that they ended up buying that they, they, they bought the bar and and they have bands there too but they are able to run comedy there now oh cool so they got their own venue and, co and now the comics from Fresno and Bakersfield are Coming to them okay. to do the, the whole thing. So um, so did you do like sketch comedy before stand-up? No. So okay. um, so I'm working at Loose Rich, and then a buddy of mine had moved, one of my good friends from high school had moved six months prior um, to L.A. to pursue music okay. with him, him and his buddy and then two other guys um, from our hometown. And um, at, he gets a hold of me, and he says, Hey, man, um... We're going to get into a three-bedroom because it was they were in a two-bedroom. They were sharing rooms, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, we're going to move into a three-bedroom. We need another roommate. And he's like, you know, you always talked about it. You said you want to do stand-up. So why don't you just come out here and do stand-up? So I was like, okay. Yeah. And I literally, I was gone within a week, week and a half. I quit my job at Lewis Rich. Took your Lewis Rich money and bailed. Took, went in there, didn't even give them. A, they're like, well, "Can you give us a week?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to LA." And um, I got everything ready. My mom knew, my sisters knew, and I had a hard time telling my dad. I was a little concerned telling my dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then my mom kept going, "Well, you better tell. You're leaving in like three days." Because your dad was probably a. You work hard and right, right. Hardworking, yeah. He yeah. he did everything. He was a factory worker. He was a pool plasterer. He was a construction guy. I mean, he there's like literally nothing he could concrete. I mean, this guy could do anything, right? Yeah. So I was like, oh, my mom's like, hey, you're leaving like in two, three days. You got to tell your, you got to tell dad about, you know. So um, we were at the dinner table, and then I was like, uh, hey, dad, I, I'm. Uh, I'm not working at Loose Rich. I, I quit. And he's like, what? What? And then I was like, yeah, I'm going to move to L.A. And he's like, L.A.? When? And I go like, in, you know, on Tuesday. <laughs> he's like, for what? What are you going to do? And I go, well, I've always wanted to do stand-up. And he started laughing. Yeah. And he goes, you'll be back in three months. Right? Which, you know, now he feels bad that he said that. But he was like, hey, yeah. you hadn't even been out of the house. Sure. Because you didn't even know how to cook. Yeah. What was I supposed to say? You yeah. know? So, um, but every time I almost broke out here, 
Mm-hmm. Those for those you know those early years, when when you're mic open micer or you're yeah, that's like the first five years. Five years, yeah, dude. Really first five is. when man, I was ready to break and go back home, and I could hear my dad. Even though it was more than three months, I just I couldn't get myself to 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 go back. Yeah, because of that laugh. Because of what he said. Yeah. More than anything, more and the laugh, but more than anything, you'll be back in in, in three months. So. Yeah. Um, so in a way, he helped you. He did, and he feel you know when I tell that story to, to family, they, they, he, I know he feels bad, and he says, I, I, "I didn't mean to," and I go, "No," I said, "Dad, you did me a favor because I would have come back. I think I would have come back easily, yeah. and I could have got, I could have worked with, gotten a job anywhere through friends, family. I'd have ended up there, sure. you know, maybe the, with that same high school sweetheart. I don't know. But it yeah. kind of forced you to give it your all while you were here, leave it all out. Totally, to, you know. Totally, and then it's it always seems like in this business with. I mean, well, with acting too, but but there, there's I don't know if this happens to a lot of other people. There's always those times when, you know, you're ready to go. Man, this just is not. And then there's a little something something happens. happens yeah. A little sign, a gig, a TV thing. Then you get cast on something. You know, whatever you book a commercial, whatever it is, and you go, oh, oh, okay, well, shit. Sometimes you just get the right compliment. You know, like there were these two, uh, there was these, this yeah. lesbian couple at my shows in Vegas, and they were like, God, the way you talked about race, I said to my girlfriend, I go, that's how you do it. He was inoffensive, he didn't, he wasn't, you know, he was just, he, you said some kind of, I don't know, controversial shit. A little but, edgy. But the way right. you said it was so funny, and you did it so well, and I was like, thank you. Like, it was just the way they... Some compliments are better than others, yeah. and the way they did it was like, yeah, you you, yeah. you got to keep doing what you do the way yeah. you do it. And people don't realize, um, and this isn't. I'm not saying this so that people can, you know, <laughs> we don't know they're gonna gonna go walk up to the comics, and but people don't realize the effect they have on us sometimes because you know we, you know, we're doing two, three, four, you know, however many spots you're getting a week, whatever, you know, working or on the road or whatever. And sometimes, you know, I know me, I know about you, but I know sometimes we'll be like, oh, I don't feel like it tonight. Sure. And then you're looking out there, oh, my God, that table of drunks. I don't want to want to deal with, you know. And then we go up and we do our thing, and, and then we, you know, it's like I'll come off and I'll be like, oh, man, I was in and out. I was off on my thing. I wasn't in the moment. And then somebody will come up and go, I, I've been going through chemo. Um, I had breast cancer, and I this is my first time out, and I haven't laughed in months. And they, those are the those yeah. in particular, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just go, oh my god, what am I? Yeah, this is what we do, man. Yeah, like we beat ourselves we, up so much and get in our heads so much about some yeah. shit, and people are like, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah. I didn't see any of that. Stuff. I know. and I've had to learn to just. And uh, the other thing is, like, like those ladies are telling you, uh, those women told you, and you hear from other people, it's like. To just as as best we can, even if we felt off or we knew we had lulls, to just take the compliment. Yeah. You know, I used to do that thing where like, you were great. Uh yeah. I lost you guys in the middle. And they don't want to hear that shit. Yeah. They don't want to hear it. They had a yeah. great time. Yeah. They, they don't, don't want to hear it. It's funny. No. But they can't even wrap their heads around it. They're they, like, what do you what? mean? The whole yeah. thing was awesome. You're yeah. What? You're worried about 30 seconds and minutes 28. Something. Yeah, yeah. During the checks. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, drop check. Oh, well, until they drop the check. Drop checks? <laughs> yeah, you know when the, you guys are filling out? Everybody, nobody's paying attention to me. What are you talking about? You know? Yeah. And I learned. It's, it's hard, but I've learned to just go, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate that. And, yeah. You know, what do you do? You um, what do you tell people when they um, when you get somebody that uh, either comes up to you that's young, that wants to do stand up, or somebody's there's usually like a parent or something that's that's like our son or daughter wants to start doing it. Are you? How are you about that? Because I I'm always very encouraging yeah I but say. I, I know some comics don't like to answer those questions not, not you right now I mean sure. from the people no I say uh, I go if, if you're serious about it you need to get a this is what I would do this is what I did and this is what I recommend to anyone I say uh, you need to get a book called Zen and the Art of Stand-Up Comedy by Jay Sankey and read that because it outlines what you do in every position headline MC feature mm. it's a really easy to read book and then Go find out where your open mic is and get on stage as much as you can in as many different environments as you can because it's one thing to kill at your home club. Mm-hmm. It's a completely different thing to be funny 
four hours away in St. Louis or whatever. I right. go, when I started out, I would drive four hours to do five minutes on a different open mic out of Kansas City just because I knew it was important to be funny everywhere. Everywhere. And not just for, I hate when comics go, who wouldn't my crowd? Well, do they speak English? Then, <laughs> then they should be your crowd, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's what I tell them. And I go, yeah. don't worry about making a nickel for at least a couple years. Just worry about trying to get good at it and uh, all that other shit will come. But... You know, so this lady came up to me the other night, and she was like, why is it that you think that young comedians, um, and I was like, well, aren't, aren't, she said aren't that good, and I go, well, p- part of it's experience, but I it, also, this business is getting kind of watered down because people are more worried about their social media following than, they're more worried about that than before they get an act. I'm like, some of these guys have 10, 20, 30,000 followers on Instagram, but they, they don't have, have a fucking they, act They don't yet. even have three minutes. So it's like... Solid. Yeah, yeah. and it waters down the industry because... Those people, you know, like they might get a following, and then the people are like, "Oh, they came to this show, and that guy sucked." Yeah, because he doesn't know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He's good at this part, but he's not good at the stand-up part yet. Yeah. So, that- I remember being being here, man, and you know, this is all pre-social media, so in the '90s, and you know, a lot of those guys, Argus, and all these other guys, were just like, "Put in your ten years here, put in ten years, mm-hmm. and then you'll you start branching out." Yeah. To other, you know, I was like, yeah, and it made sense. I was like, sure. that sounds about right. Yeah, but ten now, years. Now it's easy to put the but cart before the horse. So it it is, speak. and and so. yeah, and and they can get, and they can also do their own little videos and 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 get followings that way, get a following that way as well. But stand up um, is a whole different thing. It's it's uh, it's a completely different animal, man. I didn't know about that book. That's interesting. Um, that book. Yeah, that book. Yeah. yeah. You know, I feel like. Um, I guess there's a lot of, I guess comedians, there's, if you put in, you get into a lot of years behind you, I guess you, you could write a book. Sure. Uh, everybody and, could kind of write a little something. And, and this one was great. I mean. And I was this guy a stand-up before? Yeah, he's a, he, he'd been a stand-up for like 20 years. And mm. when I went to my counselor and asked her what to do, I was like, I'm going to be a comedian. She looked at me, I was crazy. And I was like, I'm going to go ahead and get my degree because I've got so many credits, but I'm going to be a comedian. And. When I got home, there was a message on my answering machine. She was like, I feel bad because I didn't know how to advise you about what to do, but I did find this book, and I went and got it, and I read it on the way home back to Kansas City that my friend was driving, and I read it on the way back, and it was describing, like, the mentality of a comedian, and I remember getting chills all over me, being like, yes, that's, that's me. You know, like that's, you know, and for the first time in my college career, I was excited about what I was going to do because I knew I was going to do stand-up. Um how did it? How long were you on Mad TV, dude? I only did the. I got a bad bum deal on that whole thing, man. Here's the show that had been on the air. Thirteen. I came in on season thirteen. And it was how many seasons? Thirteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Can you man. believe that? And I remember when I first got on, Bobby, Bobby Lee. Um, was you know he put in a word for me by the way because they mm-hmm. were they were specifically looking for a Latino guy but they had gone through everybody through the years and it's funny because Bobby had been recommending me for like five six years he's like I got the guy like, it's Johnny <laughs> Sanchez he can do it man he can, you know and they'd be like okay Bobby okay and they went through all the other dudes yeah and finally they had gone to pretty much a lot of the ones that were here in town and so they were like all right we'll bring we'll bring him in and. And I came in and, and I um, killed it. And and Bobby, you know, when when I came in in season 13, he was like, he's like, you're going to hear rumors that they're canceling. This thing's a cockroach. It's going to live forever, yeah. Bobby was saying. Yeah. And he was, you know, I had heard a little bit uh, on that, that 13th season. And then 14th came around and we were still hearing some stuff. And Bobby's like, no way. No way! You know. <laughs> <laughs> that they end up canceling it. Oh. Bobby! <laughs> and I hated that he kept saying that too because it was I'm, I'm just weird like that yeah, like don't I am too. quit saying that you know what I hate it's, like, it's not it's not it's not he's lighting a cigarette <laughs> it's not it's not it's never you know oh you know what I hate is when someone like right before I go out stay, oh, stage oh I hate when they go I already know where you're I going I hate when they go kill it bro I'm like motherfucker I'm gonna do what I do and if they like it they like it but I don't have control over whether I kill it every time. You know what I mean? Well, and I just feel jinxed by it. I'm that like, one's... That one's you just fucked me. That, but th- this is... Yeah. But isn't it... Wor- <laughs> no, th- that one's bad. This is the the ultimate one. Dude, this crowd is so... Uh, you are going to kill. Yes, I now, hate Now, that's that. even worse because yes. they're, they're telling you not just... 
You're go gonna kill murder. it. You're, You're like, gonna dude, you. you are going to slay this room. Yeah. And it never fails, man. Never go out fails. there and it's just, I'm all, I'm off and I don't get them. And I, I don't know what the, and then it's just like, yeah, I don't know what happened, dude. Everybody else is yeah. murdering in here. Yeah. And I don't know if they get in our head or it's, I hate it. I hate it. You're I always, there. you know what I tell comics? Have fun. Yes, thank you. That's exactly just, what I say. say I, just and, have a good and time. When someone tells me what you just said about oh you're gonna murder or they're gonna love you or kill it, I go do me a favor and take that back and just tell me to have fun. Because <laughs> 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 it's happened to me so many times. I know. And they'll go and they look at me like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm serious. Serious. Yeah. Just tell Please, me to have fun. Just yeah. just take it back and say have fun. And they go, okay, have fun. And they get kind of some of them get kind of pissy about it's it. All, I'm like, I'm it's just, all negative. <laughs> yeah. All right, have fun. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute. Can you not say it like that? <laughs> it takes another two minutes. Wait a minute. I need you to say it the right way, though. Uh, I Because I think when comics are enjoying themselves, yeah. I think that's when everybody sure. can agree. That's usually your best sense, man, when yeah. you're just having it. I mean, even even on the times when... I don't, where I don't say it that often, but there are times when I'm just like, wow, you guys are great. Yeah. And I don't do that a lot. And when I do it, I mean it. And I know that I know personally there are other comedians who say that when they're not great mm -hmm. because they're trying to manipulate mind, mind trick them into getting more energy. Yeah. But I don't do that. If they're not good, I'm not, you know, if they're just I mean, and, and here's the thing, yes, it's you can't blame the audience or they, but there are just there's some odd times, man. They're just kind of, they're like, in, they're just like quiet laughers or, yeah. or they're just smiling. And, it, and then you'll just be like, man, I'm working my ass off up here where these people are. Doing. Or you'd be like, are you guys all okay? Or what, you know, and then afterwards, oh my God, you, you were wonderful. Yeah. And it's just people that they're not vocal. You can get a group. Sure. Dude, it's really weird. Are you guys all that. Germans or something? Yeah, yeah. Like this little expression. <laughs> you, have to, you have to ask him. You guys, uh, you guys do speak English, right? It's <laughs> like what you said. But um, well, sometimes what I'll say is I'll go, I'll go, uh, you know, I can stare at you for the next 20 minutes, see how you like that. <laughs> yeah. And and then it's almost like they're like, oh, that's right. We're supposed to, we're supposed yeah. to be, you know. Yeah. But you're right. Some, some people aren't vocal. I watched Dave Chappelle. I watched two or three of his specials. And I don't know if I, if I laughed out loud one time. But when he was done, I looked at my wife and I go, he's the best. Yeah. But I didn't laugh. But you know what's you know, funny? And there's like, people even in his specials. I, I I always like watching the people. Right. I keep because you know I don't need to I don't need to watch him. Sure. I've seen him forever. I don't need to like watch everything he's doing. But I like when they're panning to the people. And there's some people that were just like just what and you know they're you know they're enjoying sure. it. But it's not like they're buckled over in stitches the whole time either. You yeah. Know? So um, it is a weird weird craft man and it is it's an art form yeah you never completely have it figured out no which i the, think is that's why i know I, it's, that's the other thing too i don't ever want to and i just i don't want to be the guy the comic who's just like hey johnny how'd it go with it oh i killed again yeah <laughs> destroyed killed murdered i i've never you know i love what they said in that documentary about richard Pryor. you know he'd be in the main room here at the store and would literally kill yeah. and destroy and then this was one of his best friends and he'd get off stage and he'd be like and he said this friend said he'd go damn richard you kill that shit and then richard would be like richard would go i'll get him next time yeah now i'd rather say that to myself yeah than walking around i killed i killed i killed i when when, when, when even when i do well and somebody's like hey how to go over a, you know your first spot and i'm like Dude, it went great. I had fun. Yeah. And they were a great audience. They were a great audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not like, oh, I fucking murdered. Yeah. That's why when someone sells me to, to kill, I'm like, I'm going to do what I do. You just do what you do. And that's the other thing. It. Yeah, you you don't, I, I mean, maybe when I was younger, there, there were those times when I would be like, oh, man, oh, I want, can't wait to kill this audience, you know. That's when I'm in my 20s. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then as you, as you go and you get older and the... I think more it's just like, man, I just want to go up and have a good time and them have a good time with us and, you know. Um, so, but it, it's it's a journey. And, you know, I always tell people who are getting into it or some people, uh, comics who just started, they haven't been doing it that long. I'm like, I think the one great thing about it, dude, is like a snowflake, there are there is never the same set yeah. twice. Never, yeah. never. Never. Yeah. Even on a, on a on the road, sometimes I get through like the first show, and I go, you know what? Damn, that was awesome. I'm gonna do that exact. I'm just gonna stick with that on the second one because 
I want to, I kind of want to put it on autopilot and just yeah. have them applause breaks here and then, and then this shit's not working. Yeah. Because it's a, it's all different people. And some audiences are they bite on every little subtle thing you do, oh, and and then the ne- and then sometimes the very same night you go out with the same energy and say that same thing that same way and they yeah. just stare at you and you're like, what the, <laughs> the fuck? fuck? I destroyed last audience. You know yeah. they and then yeah. you do something that normally kills and it doesn't get what it normally does or you do something that you don't even like doing and it just comes out and all of a sudden they're laughing their ass off. That's yeah. what I was telling people about going on the road. I was like, it's different. Everywhere you go is different. Yeah. People laugh at different shit. Different. And yeah. Some crowds love you and some, you know, whatever. And some that you, the crowds that I would, that I, that I don't like or don't have as much fun are the ones that usually buy the most stuff and you get the most compliments. And sometimes you'll destroy, you feel like you really did well and people stream out of there like you're trying to sell them cancer or something. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, they can't get away from you quick enough. You know, you're yeah, just like... That's always been a weird, the the merch thing. It's, it's so hard to... I feel like... Selling merch is awesome when you're selling it, and when you're not, you feel like such a douche standing there with like, here with t-shirts. Yeah, I, right, and they're walking <laughs> by. They're walk- I've never, I don't know if Bobby's doing, I don't think Bobby's doing it still. I did it for a while. I did DVDs for a while. I never did, I never did any type of shirts or anything. Um, the other thing that I wouldn't, that I've thought about doing are uh, koozies, the beer koozies, because they're, it's like almost anybody can use those, yeah. right? The t- t-shirts are, are, are a lot of work, right? Taking them with you and everything? It can be, but it's so worth it. I mean... It, 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 yeah, okay. It, 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 I, I've found it. What, it, what do you, what's on you? What do you have? Mine what? says, go fuck yourself. Oh, that's kind of... That's yeah, funny. but yeah. like you've got it dialed in where I've seen fuckers walk up with like $200 bills yeah. and be like, can I get 10? And yeah. you're just like... I need 12 that's a, for my softball You're team. damn right you can. Totally. Is the word spelled out? Yeah, it just says go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, I was shocked. Out. There's no, there's no exclamation point. I make a joke about it because the first time I ordered the shirts, the guy sent him. He was like, "Is this what you want?" And it had a, and it had an ex- exclamation point on it where it said, "Go fuck yourself." And I was like, "No, I don't want it to be like mean. I want it to be like nice. I want it to be <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Go fuck so, not, not nice, but I want it to be like." Yeah, go fuck yourself. Not go fuck yourself. Take There's the aggression out. Take the I aggression wonder, away. Have, has anybody ever contacted you? Has that ever caused a fight? Because uh, I feel like at a bar or something or somewhere I could or at a festival, I could see some guy going, Oh really? <laughs> no one's ever contacted. Nobody's me. okay. Once they buy if it, anybody they're, they're bought this shirt and had an issue, <laughs> let him know because I'm curious to know if someone would like or like a dad sees some young dude going, Hey man, and he's there with his kids and yeah. but his kids are thirteen and fourteen right. or twelve and they yeah. can read that. Well, I tell them. I on, think I'm really against this shirt. I, I, man. I tell them on. I tell them on stage. I go. It's an occasion shirt. You know. You oh, know, that's funny. You know, you wear this. A camp, wedding. Camping, <laughs> camping or Vegas or PTA meeting or something like that, but you don't wear it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> oh no, that totally works in Vegas. By the way, that's like a, that's a fantastic shirt in Vegas. Yeah. Without a doubt. Uh, that's hilarious. And Chris Porter, actually, we were driving back from some gig, and, and I was trying to think of a T-shirt, and uh, I told him to go fuck himself about something, and he goes, that's what your shirt should say. And I just I just almost heard a cash register in my head. Go, ching, 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 ching. Yeah. Like, dude, people will buy this shit out of that. Yeah, you're and right. Because that's, well that's, that's, fun, that's funnier, and it's... Then, then a lot of like good, it's got clever. Nothing to, nothing to do with my act, right? And it's, it's just, almost not even fitting, you know, to it, how you are with your stand up. Yeah, because <laughs> you're kind of more. You're you're more of like a, like you're like a likable dude. Yeah, you know who I could see. What I would think would wear, who'd have who would pitch that? It's someone like, like Brian Scalaro. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. You know, be, uh, hey, I got this shirt. Just go and go fuck yourself, and, and just walk up to me, tell me to fuck myself. I'm gonna tell you to go fuck yourself, and give me twenty bucks. You know, I had to learn how to tell wait staff what my shirt says because when I first started selling That's them, funny. they would think that I was telling them to go fuck themselves because they would go, "What's your shirt saying?" I go, "Go fuck yourself," and they'd be like. And they'd be like, well, fuck you. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> the shirt says go fuck yourself. And they'd be like, oh, I 
thought you were being a dick. Everybody yeah, like, totally, <laughs> dude. Are you kidding? You should you should have been so now saying like the shirt says that, like, that, that's what you were right, yeah. right, right. But you weren't thinking about it at the time. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, God, that's that's interesting, man. Yeah, and you know, um, I know, I know, uh, one of my comic friends has a. Uh, Shirt. He, he used it in the bit, but he, then he realized that he should just make the shirt that, you know, because he's still overweight. That he he put the um, says I lost five hundred pounds <laughs> yeah. at, when he goes to the gym, and then people are you know it's just a bit. Yeah. But then he started realizing. He said people were coming up to him going, "Hey man, uh, you should sell a shirt that says I lost five hundred pounds." So that's what he that's what he sells now huh. on the road. He tells the bit and like hotcakes, dude. Huh. This I lost five hundred pounds. Yeah. And it's usually bigger people. Yeah, people. You know, I've tried to sell like I've tried to come up with like cleaner shirts and like nicer or whatever, but they just don't. That's I hilarious. always go back to go they fuck want yourself. to go fuck yourself. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is the good, the great thing about this because this is one thing with 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 the shirts or any merch that's the bit, which is I've always battled with. You have to do the bit. Yeah. Every yeah, time, yeah, yeah. and I'm one of those. I mean, I there's stuff that I like to do a lot of that say, but th- there's times I've. Especially when I'm headlining, I'm talking about having to do 45 to an hour. Yeah. There are times I'm like, I don't feel like doing that tonight. Yeah. I don't want to do that one. But you're married to that bit, man. Yeah. If you've got it as a yeah. shirt. Yeah. So. Because what are you gonna do? Oh, by the way, I didn't do this tonight. <laughs> Sometimes uh, the crowd gets confused. Like, I got a t-shirt. Just says, "Go fuck yourself," and they'll be like, "Oh, what?" And, I, and I'm like, <laughs> "It's just a shirt." And and I've noticed that too. That like when just because people <laughs> laugh at it when I say I have them. That's not the crowd that's going to buy them. It's usually the crowd that's kind of taken aback and they don't, they don't want to laugh or clap or anything. And I just feel kind of awkward telling them, "I got this shirt." Yeah, <laughs> that's the one that's sell the most. I money. mean, I, I've I've heard from other comics that if it's it's a little bit on the bluer side, mm-hmm. they have a tendency to buy more of those. Drunks love that, yeah, yeah, because a lot of yeah, and. I don't know. And I can't believe how many old people come up and like, I want that for my son. And you know, you know what I should do is a dirty Sanchez one. Yeah, just to do it. Yeah, I saw a dirty Sanchez. I don't know something. Yeah, I got dirty Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad at all. That's not bad, right? Um, we're gonna have to wrap this up, but I would tell us what? about what I got. Forty five more minutes of shit to talk dude, about. I, we could no. easily. I'm we, kidding. We could I'm easily kidding. do no. two podcasts every time I've we'll ever. Every time I've ever talked to you, <laughs> like at the at the Long Beach Laugh Factory in the green room, yeah. um, and. I'm not just saying this, but I've always been like, man, I like that guy. Yeah, thanks, like, I've dude. always been able to just talk to you yeah. and, like, uh, you, you, there's no pretension about you. There's no <clears throat> pretentiousness about you. And, like, I just really enjoy the hell out of talking to you. And I always have. And we've always had good conversations. Yeah. So, and the feeling's mutual, by the way. And, and and I've always dug this dude, too, right John here, man. Jesus. John's yeah, always been a great, yeah. great dude. Even when he started, he was a nice, he was this nice Cool dude, even when he was working the... I remember when he came back, I was like, yeah, wait, you were like, oh no, I go back here, let me explain, and then I was like, oh yeah, you do, you're, you're a fucking... Tell us, tell us about your movie, though, before we get out of here. Oh, shit, that's right, that was a reason why, <laughs> that's what I really completely <laughs> forgot about. Uh, yeah, I did this independent comedy a few years, a couple of years ago, or a few years ago, and and they, they finished it up, and um, it's called Taco Shop. Okay. Um, Really funny, man. It came it came out really good. I was I was even and I'm picky. We just talked about all that sure. earlier, but so um, Felipe Esparza's in it. Another a few few comics. George Perez, a girl named Cookie, Tyler Posey's the lead, he, and the girls know who that is. He's from Teen Wolf, and I bet it's um, hilarious. It's a good movie, man, and it's on. Um, you can find it on on if you're a digital person, then um, which is probably the majority of the people here. It's like iTunes. Amazon and on demand, and then if you're old, you know, <laughs> if you're older. But for the people who want DVD, it's 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 like at Walmart and Target, you know. Okay. So it's called Taco Shop. But I and that's not a spoiler alert. But this is just I'm warning. I'm telling people make before you watch it, make it a little taco party. Okay. Because there's an opening scene to this movie. Good. People are gonna just stop it and go get tacos. Yeah. The opening scene. Make, I left the premiere after 15 minutes You're at like, the arc light. Yeah, go. I was stu- I was already hungry <laughs> in that opening scene, dude. I, and you could hear everybody in the audience go, "Ooh, oh!" oh as they're preparing all, with all oh. the cilantro and the onions, dude. Everybody in the in the theater was like, "Oh!" And I was already hungry. I didn't eat. And literally 15 minutes in, dude, I took off huh. and went straight to El Gavilan right there on Sunset in La Brea. Okay. And got four tacos. Well, there's I, tacos are probably my favorite food. 
Who doesn't love? I, it's like yeah. I don't know if I've ever met anybody who does not like tacos. Yeah, tacos, cheese, chocolate, puppies. There's some things that if you don't like, I don't want to know you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm with it, dude. Anyway, it's it's taco shop. It's a uh, they can find it out in those places. Thanks for thanks for reminding me, man. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, dude. absolutely. I meant to do it way earlier in the show, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was so easy to talk to you. What? Uh, where can people find you otherwise? Oh, um, uh, at Johnny Sanchez Comic on um, Instagram. Twitter and Facebook. Okay, all three. Johnny Sanchez comic, yeah. Cool man. Um, and always, and thanks for having me, dude. Yeah. We've been talking. We've been trying to do this since what February or March or something. Or? It's been a while. Like you, the movie bit. thing. I don't, I don't. We wrote stuff and yeah. something always came up. Something but, always came up, and then yeah. uh, and I was like, oh my god, because it's funny because I was like, you text me yesterday. Uh, uh, were you waiting for something to come up for me? Like, hey, dude, about Tuesday. No, no, no. okay. Because I, 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 mean, I you, when you text, I go, oh no. I bet something came up. I don't know why. I was like, don't tell me it's not going to happen. Yeah, They've yeah. been wanting to do it. So. <laughs> and it's always good to be back in my my home. This is my, I consider this place home, dude. I always consider the yeah, store. Yeah, we, uh, we didn't get to get in Oh, any my God. We didn't stuff. even. Well, we'll have you back. We'll do another one, dude. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, as always, go to timgathercomedy.com and, and follow me on my, all my social media links and my YouTube and all that shit is on uh, timgathercomedy.com and uh, help out little Bo Making It, Making It Happen.com and uh, M A C A N It Happen.com. And yeah. anything you want to plug, John? Uh, Lake Havasu, Pine Top, Arizona, beginning of July, or I guess next week. Lake now. Havasu? Yeah, yeah. The Edgewater Casino there. It's oh, uh, the Edgewater Casino. You know, it's a, that regional Southern yeah, California yeah, gigs. Uh, but That's just J O N. I believe I've done that, yeah. John is here, uh, dot com has all that. John is here. Yeah. John is here dot com. Yeah. Cool. All right. No, all right. Funny. And you know what? One last thing. Fuck shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch Vision Quest. But watch, watch, watch Taco Shop, and then right after that, watch Vision Quest. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right, tacos. man. All right. Thanks, thanks guys. guys. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, man.